Today in our How to Loom Knit series, we'll be working more increases. This is lesson 8.1 and it takes it up a level. We'll be working five different increases. These are the make one left and right. Then we have the lifted increase left and right. Then we have two in this particular one where we'll be working the KFB or knit one front back and also the KFPB that's knit front purl back and then also yarn over. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. In this particular video, I want to really emphasize that I have taken the time to knit all of the needle versions of these same stitches. So I'll be taking what I know from my needle knitting knowledge and showing you exactly how to make them on the loom so they look the same. I love all of these increases, but some I love even more. Give you a tip. I especially enjoy the lifted increases, and I think that they are the most clean. Then uh, I also will tell you that my new favorite is the knit front purl back, which is more invisible if you have to do a KFB in the middle, and you can do a KFB on the side. You also are very familiar with the yarn over increase, which we've done in the previous video with a pattern. And then over here is the make one left and right, which often can get very confusing. And so I'm going to clear all of these up today. We'll work on each stitch. For supplies, you're going to need a loom and the appropriate gauge of yarn, plus your loom tool, and I suggest stitch markers for where you want your increase to go. You're also going to need a um, stitch marker that's locking or a cable needle to mark a particular stitch and also a crochet hook. It doesn't matter what size as long as you can grab your yarn from there. The loom I'm using right now is a 5 8 or large gauge loom from KB and I'm working with this uh, Big Twist Natural Blend. It's a super bulky weight 6 yarn or you could use a bulky 5 on that uh, type of loom. Uh, either way, just make sure that your yarn is appropriate for the loom and let's begin. For written detailed instructions on each individual increase, be sure and click down in the link in the description below to get the information. I will go over each individual stitch and know that I have tested each of them on needles to make sure that this version you'll see here is the most accurate to needle knitting if you're converting. Let's begin. Make one increases. Make one left and make one right. Make one increases. Work with the bar in the row below. It's the bar of yarn that goes from one stitch to the next, so it's between pegs. You're going to take that and twist it in one direction or another to make it right or left-handed. Make one stitches lean to the left or to the right. You have to twist the bar of yarn in between the stitches to the clockwise position for left or counterclockwise to right. It's harder to remember that, so I have a technique so that all you need to know is you need an empty peg and if you use it to the left of the empty peg or the right, it's really easy. So go ahead and make sure your row before is nice and loose so you can move those stitches around and then you want to knit all the way up or work all the way up, even if it's a knit or purl, to the stitch where you want your increase. In this case, I am working all of these stitches to the right of the stitch marker here, and my new increase is going to fall between these two stitches. So now I need to move over all of my stitches. You can also work them and move them as you go one by one. If you do that, make sure and pull out the extra slack before you start making your increase. If you don't, you're going to have uh, bad tension and it won't be as consistent, so you'll want to pull on those stitches to get that extra slack out before you move on. Now that I have made an empty peg, we're going to go to the back of the loom and look at this bar, sometimes called the ladder, of the stitch. So it's in between the uh, peg that I just worked and the peg uh, that has the stitch marker on it. We're going to lift this bar up and twist it, okay? So you need extra slack. So you're going to tug it to create slack. Now bring the loom hook forward. You can put the loom hook in from the front or the back, whatever you're comfortable with. So tug to create slack, and then bring the loom hook to the right of the empty peg. So I'm gonna use my other finger and kind of guide it down and hold it. So we bring it to the right of the empty peg, and then continue tugging around to the front of the peg. And you may have to use your other finger uh, or nail to uh, keep it down and then continue lifting it and rotating that hook 
up and over the peg to get it wrapped around. So you're using your loom hook to guide the remainder of the yarn of the bar around up and over the top of the peg to complete that wrap. And then all you need to do is knit that stitch. So you're knitting the bar and it'll be a little bit tight and that makes a new stitch once you knit that over. Then go ahead and work your other stitches just as you would. Okay. Now to work a left, we're going to uh, work it on this one between these two pegs. So let's just continue. I'm going to go ahead and knit that stitch because I'm going to be working uh, in between these two stitches. Now I need to move over these pegs in order to uh, knit this one in between. So go ahead and move those. And now we want to pick up this bar here. And tug on that for some slack. And then we want to move it to the left of that peg. So tug for slack, pull the bar between the pegs. So to the left of the empty peg, go around the front and then get the rest of that up and over that empty peg. And then now you're going to knit that stitch. You can do the same thing when you're working from left to right. You're just flipping it the same way. If I did a left, I would just be working all the way up to this stitch and moving my stitches over, making an empty peg, and then pulling it out, making my yarn to the left of that empty peg, and twisting it around just as I did. Lifted increases. Lifted left and lifted right. Lifted increase stitches lift a stitch from the row below to the right or to the left and makes a new stitch. The lifted stitch looks so pretty because it's consistent, there's no holes, it's nice and flat. I really like it. Uh, what you need to know about this stitch is you're working with the legs of the stitch. It, it takes that V shape and you've got a right leg and a left leg. And so if I look at one individual stitch, say right here, you can see we have the right side and the left side. So you're going to be working with the row below, the row that you're on, and lifting that leg of the stitch up onto an empty peg, either direction, left or right. The difference comes in when, you, um, when you're when you working up to the peg and you grab that loop and you put it up on top of the empty peg. It's really easy. You just knit it and move on, either from the right direction or the left direction if you're knitting. But if you have um, worked up to that point and you're going to be passing it and then need to grab the stitch from the opposite side, that's when you need something like a cable needle and a crochet hook to help you along. So we're gonna do both of those here, which actually we're gonna show all four stitches. So let's jump right into that. I've already moved my stitches. So first you're gonna prepare before you knit, move the stitches to create an empty peg. I have an empty peg here right before my um, uh, stitch marker here. And just so you know, you cannot create a um, right and a left from the same stitch. So if you want a middle, uh, pattern here. If you want a pattern that has one column of stitches here, you're going to need um, a pair of stitches in the middle because it actually grabs uh, the, uh, it leaves the uh, left stitch from this column and the right stitch from this column uh, here. So it's kind of funny, but this is made uh, leaving these two stitches in the middle to work my right increase and my left increase on. So uh, this one for the right increase, you're just going to lift up on this stitch here in the back, okay, the one we want to increase, and you're just taking that stitch below and putting it onto your empty peg. And then knit that stitch. And that's it. Now you knit the stitch where you grabbed it from below, and you're ready to make your next increase. 
to make the lifted left increase when you're on the uh, row coming from the right, you're going to uh, wait to knit this stitch that's marked. Go ahead and prepare your row by moving the stitches over. So you need an empty peg here. Pause your video as needed. And now using a locking uh, stitch marker or a cable needle, you're going to mark your purl bump behind the peg. So I'm going to grab this stitch here and just mark it with a cable needle. Okay, we're gonna use that in a moment. It's just easy uh, with that cable needle. You can also use one that looks like uh, something like this. Then we're going to uh, knit this peg just as usual. pull it to get a little bit of slack okay and now you're going to tug the cable needle pull it back a little bit so we have a little bit of space okay and then we want to take our yarn and put it to the back and we're going to be making a new knit stitch grab your crochet hook and put it through from the front of that stitch and yarn over and pull it through that stitch. Just pull it right on through and you're making a loop. Once you've made that loop, you just place it on your empty peg and you can remove that stitch marker and pull the slack. And you are done with the lifted left increase. Now I'm going to work from the opposite direction to show you the left uh, working from the left and the lifted right working from the left. Okay, so I have worked uh, from the left to the right up to the stitch where I want to make my lifted increase. The uh, one marked is where I'm taking my lifted increase to the left. So I have an empty peg already. I've moved over and prepared. Also, just so you know, I have knit a few rows so I have some space between some of the other increases I've made. So if you're making this on your own, we're going to uh, grab the left side and really it's just the whole stitch, but we're moving it to the left empty peg. So we're grabbing that stitch back here, okay, from the one we're moving, lifting it up and over and onto the peg. So the lifted leg is just like we did in the lifted right where we don't need a cable needle and you're just simply putting it onto your loom and then knit that stitch. And now work the stitch that you just uh, pulled that leg from. And now we'll make the lifted right and work up to the point of our lifted right. So I'm already at that point here. We want to move over our stitches to make an opening to prepare before we knit this. If you need to go ahead and stop and remember to put your cable needle in, you can go ahead and do that now. So we're just going to lift this up, put the cable needle on, go ahead and move over our stitches. So pause your video as needed. Okay, so we have marked our row below with the cable needle, and now we can knit this stitch here. And knit off. Okay, gives us a little bit of slack. And now we're gonna take our cable needle and pull it back a little bit to reveal a little bit of a hole here. And we're going to put our um, crochet hook through that hole to the back Go ahead and yarn over and pull through. Okay, it doesn't matter if you wrap over or wrap uh, under and around. You just need to get some yarn on there and pull it through that hole and you're making a loop, okay? And then you just set that loop onto your knitting. And you can take that cable needle off to set that loop right on your loom and tighten it up and continue working your row as usual. Knit front back increases. Knit front back or KFB and knit front purl back or KFPB for more invisible. Knit front stitches, both the KFB and the KFPB, both work with an existing stitch on your loom, making your new stitch first and then working the increase from the stitch from the previous row. 
KFB is knit front back and you can knit the stitch in front and then you make a twisted or e-wrap stitch for the second stitch. It creates a little bit of a bump though, which is fine along the border. So you can see how this increase here and this one is hidden, but when it's in the middle, it creates too much a bit of a bump here. And so a workaround is to do a purl stitch instead of the e-wrap. And that is the KFPB or knit one purl back. It's actually a neat needle knit stitch and it can be found in some Ravelry boards and uh, Stacy Perry with Very Pink Knits actually has a video showing how to do that on the needle but I want to credit Ruth Airy who has Catherine Deberly or the answer lady and she made a video on it uh, and it doesn't look like it's purled but it actually is. She's working it from the back and I'll credit the video down below and you can see that but I'm going to show you a little bit different version today and it's easier to remember. Uh, again, way to go Ruth uh, for figuring this out on the loom. It looks really great. I do want to say that you want to move your stitches after you've knit them uh, because it can create a bit of a loose tension issue and I just found it more on mine that uh, if I move them after I work them it made a cleaner look than say down here. Go ahead and work all the way up to where you want your increase. Now I'm going to be increasing from this one with the marked peg and uh, you can pause your video and get to this point. Okay, so you can work from the direction of the right or the left. It's worked the same way. All you do is work up to the stitch that you want to use. Don't actually knit that stitch just yet. And we need to make a traditional knit stitch. Some people call it the reverse purl. You're gonna put your yarn in front of the peg on the top and grab a loop. So you're gonna pull downward to make a new loop, leaving the old loop on, okay? So make a new loop and place it on your empty peg. And now take that yarn and pull it and you've just made your new stitch. Now you wanna work this previous uh, stitch from the row before, you just want to e-wrap that stitch. So go ahead and e-wrap around and you'll be making the knit front back, or KFB. Let's work the KFB from the left. I've moved my stitches over, so I've worked all the way up until the stitch marker and moved them over to make an empty peg. We're going to put the yarn above the loop and our marked peg, and we're going to make a loop by knitting and pulling downward to make a new loop. And then we're gonna move that onto the empty peg and then tighten up our loop, okay? And then we just e-wrap that stitch, wrapping it around and knitting over. And continue to work your row as you would. The knit one purl back, you just work up into the stitch just like the KFB and you're going to put the yarn in front and pull downward to make a new loop and then put that loop on your empty peg tighten it up and now we're just going to purl that stitch so purl the marked peg lift the old loop off put the new one on tighten it up and you're ready to continue on your row to work the knit front purl back, you're just going to work up to the stitch, move your stitches over, and then now we're going to place the yarn above the stitch we want to create from. Do the same, you're just pulling downward, making a new loop, just as you did coming from the right. Put that onto the empty peg, tighten that up, and now purl the peg. Take the old loop off and put the new one on and continue on your row. Yarn over increase. Yarn over increases just work with an empty peg placing extra yarn in front of the peg or wrapping around to increase a stitch. The yarn over increase, of course, we covered in lesson 8.0 extensively and moving stitches around, but I do want to point out that if you use the yarn over increase with the yarn just right in front of the peg and you are uh, working every other row with the eyelets like this, they line up very nicely and kind of twist these stitches together, okay? There's nothing loose. If you make an e-wrap like this one here, you can barely see it 
and um, it, it covers up the stitch a little bit and this part right here is loose so the only reason why you would do that uh, for some of these patterns is because it needs this extra wrap where you're actually unwrapping it in that direction to make a wider gap so unless your pattern calls for it I still recommend just holding the yarn right over in front of the peg. I do want to add in this one, I've shown it set up where I've actually moved a few over. So I actually have uh, four openings uh, or empty pegs to put uh, yarn overs. So in this pattern, I've worked the first four stitches and then I moved them over and then I continue moving these over as well. So again, if you want to do a yarn over, uh, a traditional yarn over, you're just going to put the yarn in the front and then continue working the next peg as usual. And then I'll show you the E-wrap yarn over. So if you think that this one isn't long enough and you want a little bit more slack, just pull on it and you can have a little bit more slack. Okay, let's work up until this next one. And then the E-wrap yarn over is taking that yarn and wrapping it as an E-wrap or twisted knit stitch and then working the next stitch. Okay, so you have this extra amount of yarn, and that is the yarn over increase. I hope you enjoyed making your loom knit increases. So tell us which is your favorite loom knit increase. We'd love to hear down in the comments below. Also, be sure and check out the description for more videos in our How to Loom Knit series. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.